Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna dive into async storage. We'll talk about what exactly it is, what it is and isn't good for, and then we'll code up some examples. Let's get started. So what is async storage? It's essentially a key value pair that you can set and retrieve. It's unencrypted, so you don't wanna store any real personal information, passwords, API keys, anything like that, that you wouldn't want anyone else to see. It's also persistent, meaning it's gonna stay on the phone until you either remove it yourself or the user clears your app's data. It's perfect for storing the user settings for your app or keeping track if you've shown an onboarding screen to them. As mentioned before, it's unencrypted, so keep that in mind. It's also not a replacement for storing data as you would with Firebase or another database like that. I'm using Expo here, but if you're using the React CLI, you can just pull in this package. It's the same code. It works exactly the same. It's just built in with Expo and you have to pull the package in with the CLI. So now that we've talked about what it is and what it can do for you, let's jump into the code and see how it actually works. All right, I've got a blank React Native project open here. Got the iPhone simulator going. If you've watched any of my other videos before, you know I like to have at least a little bit of a design. So I'm gonna put one together real quick and we'll go over it as soon as I'm done. While you're watching it, if you would hit that like button and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos, I would very much appreciate it. Okay, let's go. All right, so we've just got a basic little design here. Now we wrap the whole thing in a container, so it'll take up the full width and height, uh, background color, and align everything in the center. Uh, we've got an image that I'm pulling in. I use uh, undraw.co. They're a really great website for illustrations. We just give it a width of 100%, take up the full width, height of 200, and a little bit of margin at the top. Resize mode is contained, so it'll stay within those dimensions that we set. Uh, just a header to display what's your name. Then we have the input for where we'll be entering in the name. Give it just a little bit of styling. And then we have two buttons, one that's going to be for saving the name you put in, and then one for removing that name. And here's the styling for that. Okay, let's get the state set up now. First, we'll import it. And we'll set it to name and set name. Now let's hook up the text input to it. On change text is equal to, we'll get the text and we'll set the name to that text. Now let's display the name. And if we type into the text box, we see that it's displaying on the screen. 
Okay, now let's set up the function to save the name into storage. First, we need to import async storage. If you're using the CLI, you can import the package with npm install at react native community slash async storage. But because we're using expo here, it's already built in. So let's make the function for save. It's going to be an async function. in a try catch block. And all we need to do, say await async storage dot set item. And this will be where you name your key. We'll just call it my name for now. It can be anything you want. And then we pass in the name that's stored in our state. In our catch, we'll just alert if there's an error. So now let's hook up our save button so that it'll call this save method. We'll say on press and we'll save. So now let's create a method to load the value. We'll call it load. This is also an async function. Again, we'll do it in a try catch block. We'll alert if there's an error. And now this is very similar to how we save it. They let name equal await async storage dot get item. And then we pass in whatever item we want to retrieve. In this case, my name. If what we get back is not null, then we will set the name into the state. And now we want to be able to load this every time the screen loads itself. Let's import use effect. We'll call the load method in it. We'll add an empty array so that it only re-renders on the initial page load. Now when I save it, you can see it's automatically loaded. We'll reload the app and there's our name. So now how about if we want to remove our name from storage? We'll create a method called remove. Again, async. Again, a try catch block. And actually, this will be a try catch finally. In the try, very similar to how we've done everything else. Wait, async storage dot remove item. Pass it in the key that we want to remove, in this case, my name. If we have an error, we'll just alert it. And that once that's finished, we'll remove the name from the state. Okay, so now let's hook up this method to the button to remove. On press, we'll call remove. So now with any luck, when we click remove, it'll remove the name from here, and it'll remove the name from storage. It's gone from there. Let's reload. And it's also gone from there. Try it again. Save it. Reload the app. We still have it there. Now if we click remove, it's gone from there. And it's gone from our app. One thing to note is that we're saving a string here. If, for example, we wanted to save an object, then we're going to have to pass it through the stringify method. Say we have a user, we want to have a name property, and a location property. To save it, instead of just passing in the name variable, we would pass it in like so. Wait, async storage dot set item, my name, and then we need to stringify it. So we'll do JSON dot stringify user. And that's how you would save anything other than a string. Now to get the reverse, let's comment this back out. In our load method, instead of doing this, we say let JSON value equal to wait async storage dot get item. Again, pass in the name. And then in our check, we say if JSON value is not equal to null, then we parse it. JSON dot parse, pass in that value. And then if you wanted to, you could say you could set this to the state as well. Set name equal to the json.parse.
So that's the basics of async storage. There's a couple other methods. There's one to merge items, where if you had an object like here and you wanted to merge in some other property, you could do that. There's also a remove all method to clear all of the keys that you've set. If you'd like to check those out, they're all explained quite well in the documentation. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Hope everyone has a wonderful day.